Okay, well, first of all, gentlemen, thank you very much. I thought that was um, incredible and incredibly interesting. So where do we start? So let me ask you this. So we live in a world of um, fast and elusive, uh, fast fashion, instant conversation. Um, if, you don't, if you send a response, you need to get one quickly. Attention, to your point, publicists decided to walk away from CAN last year and invest money into AI, which I thought was great, but they did it at the price of creativity for all of their agencies. And so all of those things make me wonder, and I ask you, does creativity still matter? Does it, it, in the real world, does it matter? Does it matter to brands? A lot of people here run businesses. Does it matter to businesses? We talk about creating a logo and perhaps creating a brand. It, can we do that? And does it matter? I think creativity is about making connection, right? And so if we are trying to make the connection, it's really more of a human to human connection, especially if you are speaking in the context of marketing. And humans understand humans, and therefore that's how we are able to articulate ourselves and speak to other humans to engage them in whatever it is we do whether it is about ideas, whether it's about products, whether it is about concepts, all of those are articulations of what we as humans have been blessed with to be able to articulate. Yes, I am in the, I am in the camp. Look, I come from AI training. I came from the machine learning. Uh, I spent the time in the AI labs and at MIT and other places. What taught me through that experience was, frankly, the greater levels of appreciation for what humans can actually do and how hard it is to make machines do the things that we have the capacity to do. Yes, I heard of us, the amazing amount of mundane activities we as humans just don't like to do, we can obviously parcel it out to the machines and we've done that through the ages. But there are things, the judgment related or other things that simply humans have to and that's all about connecting. Okay, Matt, yeah. you, you should jump in. Yeah, How, does it matter? I, I mean, of course it does. I mean, I think, I think, building on that point, I think humanity, we, we connect with each other through empathy and emotion. And I think uh, if we're just worried about outputs and optimizing and performance, we lose that, that human connection. I think, you know, when we talk about, you know, starting to work with brands, if we can like, bring into a marketing realm and not like talk to, Ethereal, um, you know, a brand, uh, not to knock the logo joke guys, but a, a, a brand doesn't start with a logo. A brand starts with a purpose and why it even exists. And I think, you know, we've done, you know, we did work with, you know, so I was trying not to do too many, you know, plugs for agencies. We, we did, Sydney, Toronto is known for the work on We the North. So that's one thing I think everyone will probably be familiar with. And that assignment started with, we need a logo, we need a new logo. And the reality was that wasn't actually the, the problem they were trying to solve. And, and we, when we dug in and we, we asked why, like, why do you think you need a lo new logo? What's going on? You know, what's the problem you're actually trying to solve? And, and, and they, they couldn't get people, they couldn't get good players to want to come to Toronto and sign with the team to play. That, that was the problem they were, they were solving. And, and when we dug into that a little bit more, you know, we dug into the fact that most people who play for Toronto teams in larger leagues feel like outsiders mm -hmm. because it's, you know, we're, we're in an American league. We're the only ones representing Canada. Uh, and then we also dug a little bit more. There's a lot of people who don't like hockey. I know it's sacrilege to say in Toronto or anywhere in Canada. Um, and they were looking for another sport. And they also felt like outsiders within Canada. And so when we started to dig into this, this outsider thing and came to something like We the North. Mm -hmm. We the North was an emotional resonance that united the country, yeah, and, it was, and it wasn't about a, rally a logo. Card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so you uh, at Yum, uh, you know, kind of do. When I look at the work that Yum produces, it's sort of you know the very kind of you know promotional driven. You know, buy a pizza, buy a you know snack pack for five ninety nine of you know whatever. But then I also see um, some incredibly brave, really interesting um, ideas. 
you're a marketer, you're listening to all of this, you're obviously a digital person that has, you know, dug deep. What, what's your view on, on creativity and how do you see it as, as, a, as a leader at, at Pizza Hut? At the pizza, yeah. So I would say on the one hand, I believe creative absolutely matters. I mean, I, I could, our definition of creative could be used very loosely, right? It could be very specific, it could be very broad. Raise your hand here tonight if you at any time during this presentation have opened Instagram and refreshed. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Why, why are you doing that? You're doing that because you love stories, you love content, you love information that's new and fresh and relevant, right? Like we are, we're looking for new ideas, we're looking for fresh content. So I think the Facebooks and the Twitters of the world have, have told us we are visual animals, we love, we love new stuff. So without that new stuff, I, I don't know what I'm opening on my phone 150 right. times a day. To your original question about what's going on at Yum, on the one hand we can do the most, you know, inspirational and powerful campaigns in the world. Um, the other hand, I have to look at the ROI of that and say at the end of the day, it's, it's pizza and pizza is pizza is pizza, it's bread, meat and cheese, it's absolutely delicious, as I hope you all think. Um, and we all eat three, four, five times a day, right? So in some cases, actually, we don't want to overthink it. We don't want to put too much emphasis on the creative, when in fact, it's the technology, it's the targeting, it's understanding our customers of who we know most of them today through e-commerce. So. I think it lies somewhere in the middle in what you're really trying to achieve. If it's a top of funnel brand campaign and you need two minutes of view time and you need residence and you need ad lift, ad recall lift, then great. If you need to sell two pizzas for six bucks, I don't know if I need two minutes of attention. I think six seconds might suffice. Mm -hmm. and, and Adobe, I think you guys are also, uh, you know, kind of have a really interesting view because you sit at the center. So you, on the one hand, you're a technology company and you're developing all of these tools and AI and, and a whole bunch of other platforms, and you work with clients every single day, and you sort of, you know, to their points about understanding the why and seeing the real challenges. And when you think about this intersection of creativity and all the possibilities that technology is enabling us to do, and that's certainly what you talked about in your presentation, elevating, um, what advice do you give us about how to think about this? Well, I think um, what I would say is that you know, AI and its effect on, you know, our day-to-day -day life is well-established, right? I mean, it's changing the way we live, it's changing the way we communicate with one another, and it's changing the way that creators, frankly, do their work, right? Whether they're a designer or they're a digital marketer. Um, so I think, you know, for all of you in the room, my advice would be, it's free advice, that's so worth, you know, the, the price, um, is to embrace the change. And uh, you know, really learn how you can use all of these innovations that Adobe's doing, that other uh, companies are certainly doing, and how you can use that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, because I do think that you know we're getting to a point um, where we need to upscale our skill set, right? Uh, a lot of this lower level stuff will will be taken care of by uh, you know machine learning algorithms. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge is. You know, we don't want a future where everyone's using the same open source repository of uh, machine learning sure. algorithms that's generating the same looking creative for everybody. We don't want to be stuck in this mm -hmm. sea of sameness. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think it's uh, you know incumbent on everybody here to uh, to empower themselves to you know learn how they can. Um, you know, use this technology advancement. And, to and you know what, and maybe it elevates because maybe what it does is it throws away because we have so much shit that's out there right now. Like there's so much crap. If, if AI and some of the stuff that, you know, can just get rid of that and then we can focus on what John Hagerty talked about today. Um, he's one of the biggest creative directors in the world. He's a can. Um, can is a um, kind of the, the, the meeting of the good and the great in creativity and technology. And he said, um, you know, I'm really nervous because I'm not seeing the, I'm not seeing the great as much as I want to. I, I, just, I, just, I wanted to come back to the last point there. I don't, I don't want to gloss over it because I think there, when we talk about artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence or, or data and, and automation, all this other stuff, we are talking about decisions that are made on data from the past, and I think. Creativity has to live and focus on where the future is going. Yes, some of that's going to help, and there's predictive things that are happening, but right now, a lot of the stuff is based on what's happened in the past. And the past is done. Yeah. Yeah. Questions from the audience? Sure. Oh, there are mics, so we have. Hi there, I'm Joanna, and I want to have a quick question for Matt, actually, like, uh, yeah. 
Just for you. It's um, talking about uh, attribution as far as um, creativity is concerned. Because I know that in the path that we take towards you know, uh, marketing attribution and understanding how creativity and technology interact, I think that the creative agency has become you know, more sort of on the trial regarding you know, how does creativity contribute to a marketer's budget. And so I'm wondering, you know, what you're hearing from your clients or how you're responding maybe to your clients regarding, you know, the importance of the, the creative aspect of things and how you're using technology to help marketers see greater ROI with their programs. I mean, it's, 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 it's not to give a lame answer, but it, all, it depends on every client, right? Every client's going to have a different uh, reason. I mean, we, we are a creative agency. We are an agency that focuses more on the transformation side, so we don't spend a lot of time in the media metrics. Um, but yeah, if you look at yeah, the We The North example I, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, they were already sold out on, on season tickets. They didn't need to sell more tickets, but they were able to create a lifestyle brand and the overall valuation of the Raptors after We The North went up huge. And the, you know, they, they started selling $2 million a week in merch. So like, there, was a, there was a direct correlation to that Assignment. When, when, you know, we do some work with Netflix, and and it's fascinating because, you know, we do a lot of digital and social media marketing for Netflix, and they don't look at any of the numbers. They don't care. They're not like their marketing is not used for acquisition. Their programming is used for acquisition. They look at what people are watching. They look at where they're 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 going, and it's like okay, when we first picked it up a couple years ago they had the coasts in the US covered off. They, they, they had the liberal, whatever, media elite, whatever people are calling them these days on the left, and, you know, east and west coast. They did not have middle America. Their only room for growth was middle America. So they brought back family value shows like Fuller House uh, and the Gilmore Girls and, and the Ranch and, show, and they used programming and targeted, you know, marketing about that programming to grow their business. So I think, and then on the flip side, we do work for H&R Block and h and Block has a very specific window in the year to make their numbers. And so they're, they are, they're, they're, they're very acquisition focused and they'll get right down to like, okay, so we've got these months, we need to get as many people filing taxes on our platform as possible. Like each client has a very different need and I think what creative agencies need to, need to get away from are just brand metrics, or, and, and definitely get away from reach metrics and all those other ones, and, and, start, and, and start to get back to the business. Like, what, is the, what business challenge are we trying to solve? And technology yeah. agencies are the new creative agencies, yeah. right? Siraj, tell me, uh, just because that, that question made me think about another sort of sideline to this, which is, is there an ROI to creativity? Well, so as Matt was describing and responding to the question, I, I think that creativity, if broadly defined, um, has been established as having an ROI, as though Steve Jobs didn't know the value of designing something that was really usable with great aesthetics and so forth. He wasn't sitting around saying, will this have an ROI? Almost everything we interact with today needs to have the design, broader thinking of creativity, which is both a combination of aesthetics and utility and everything that it needs to have. You can't sit there and think about whether I have an ROI. You have to have it. This is all competing every single day. If Pizza Hut is going to offer, you know, ordering through the mobile app and so forth, it needs to think about what that app really needs to do. How do you make it easy and consumable and attractive and so forth? You're not sitting there thinking, what's the ROI of developing a better app? You have to do it. You have no choice at this point. Right. One plus one equals three. Questions? Yep. Thank you. This question to the panel. Um, what are your take on different forms of online advertising? And um, specifically, if you can mention um, programmatic ads. Thank you. I mean, I think there's a few people from Adobe that would love to answer that question. Um, I'm from the digital media side of the business, which is our creative cloud and document cloud business. Um, the experience cloud people are the ones that you want to talk to about that. So I'm certainly happy to connect you to the right folks um, to give them. I can give you a view. I think, it, I think it's terrible, but I, I'm going to, why don't you, you, you jump in? I'll take a stab at this. 
Um, so I'm the digital guy that now works for a brand and I'm responsible for TV and flyers and radio and all the other stuff that is not digital. Um, I, I think there's this huge push right now to move to digital and I'm a huge believer in digital. I think brands are paralyzed right now between, they know they need to be doing more digital. They don't know exactly how much, where, and when they actually see that ROI. So it's obvious you, you, you want social, you want search, some form of remarketing and CRM. But how much and when and how to scale that up, I think, is where brands are, are struggling right now. Dollars are flowing from TV, uh, from radio, from print uh, to digital. But I think finding that right mix of, of what ad is, communicating your message, whatever that message is, whether it's a, a price promotion, whether it's a quality message, um, I, I don't think we've figured out. I think we'll probably hear from some of the guys up here that the quality of ads drastically vary. The price points on ads drastically vary. The reality is it leaves brands sitting here wondering, what is my, the, the best bang for my buck? And it's constantly changing. And I think as we can see in this room tonight, there are so many companies doing so many new things that are all the new coolest thing that we should all be doing. And it's hella confusing. Christy Karens has a quick question. I have, I have I just one question to add to that. Your question was about what's the role of programmatic advertising? Um, on, online advertising and all specifically uh, program, programmatic or native ads? I think the, <clears throat> the, the single biggest accomplishment I have seen with programmatic advertising in particular is for the 30 years before today, the single biggest ask from most advertisers was how can I make sure that I can get unique reach? Because the question is, am I reaching 10 million people once or am I reaching 1 million people 10 times? That question could not be answered with a clear yes or no. Today, with programmatic platforms, you can. And that's a huge advance. I think, and we're all challenged because we get to be provocative on panels, right? Uh, I don't give a fuck about reach. I'm sorry, I don't. Um, and I think where you can get into using programmatic and digital or social or anything else, like know your audience, know where you're gonna get the, the biggest bang for your buck and who to focus on, build your personas, build your segments, and create tons of variations of your ads to really test what's working and, and converting people if you can track all the way through to conversion and, and keep optimizing because again, we work with uh, an online grocery retailer, and they have all, they have seven different segments they're trying to reach. We give them 50 different combinations of things to do every month, and we, you know, it's, and it's crazy. Our, our art directors and copywriters hate it because we're giving images and, and copy separately, so they're not even coming together, and, and, the, and the company we work with is like doing their magic to make it work, but they also know that they need to get people to order groceries online three times before they commit. And so, and then they start to find more people. So I think there's a lot you can do around segmentation and targeting up. If you're gonna do programmatic, make sure you're committing to it and, and going deep and, and building it. Don't just like buy media, set stuff out there and then yeah. forget about and, it. And I think, I think, and I don't wanna preach about this, but I think in my media experience, you know, cause we started with what are we gonna, where are we gonna do it? Instead of starting with what's the problem we're solving and then the idea that we'll solve it. Christy, did you have a question that you wanna? Jump in on Christy Karens is uh, our acronym sponsor, but she was also the head of Global Mondelez and ran lots of brands around the world and has a really interesting view. So jump in on this. It's a loaded question. <laughs> Reminds me of another panel I was on. Anyway, um, yeah, I will, I will keep some of my opinions to myself, but I was really intrigued um, when you were talking about attention as a currency. And I think the number one question you, you talked about is understanding, like, is the user interested? And so, um, you know, people wonder, why did you, why did you leave Mondelez? Why are you working at a company like Acronym? Because one of the things I'm quite passionate about is understanding intent, right? Really understanding the intent, where somebody is, we can call it a funnel, it's not a funnel in, anymore, but where is somebody and what is their real intent when they are actively reaching out to brands? Because I think we're used to, as marketers, I spent a lot of time focusing on how to get people's attention. I had lots of great agencies and we spent gobs of time talking about that. And 
I think now we're really in the age of intention, really understanding the consumer's in control and we really want to understand what their intention is. So my question is, um, as brand builders and people who work at agencies, um, a lot of what we do is spend time trying to garner differing degrees of brand loyalty, right? We're building brands, that's what we do. If you had to sort of choose um, the power of brands, brand loyalty, brand equity versus relevance, and capturing somebody in the moment and understanding what their intent is. What do you think is more powerful? Or is it's sort of a loaded question, but I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, I think um, that's an interesting question, like whether uh, it's the, the brand or the relevance. I, and probably I, it's a combination yeah, of both. Yeah, I, I think in, uh, ideal situ in an ideal situation, um, you know, you want to have both, I suppose. Um, you know, speaking, I guess, on behalf of a company that has uh, great uh, brand power, I suppose, in, you know, in, in our um, area of, uh, I, I think we still want that relevance. Like, as much as Adobe is an established brand and is sort of the de facto standard for a lot of creatives, uh, I still think that we want that uh, moments, those moments with our creatives where they're doing something with our software that um, endears them um, to us, you know, in that moment. Um, so I think, regardless of how strong your brand is, I think you still want to stay relevant. You want to? I was gonna. So the this this is such a beautiful question. I love it. Um, this is the question that will be posed as it is right now with Alexa. It's right there facing you every single day. The brand is asking the question: Is Alexa going to establish based on its understanding of what's available? Or is the brand going to have something to say about that, right? I got that right. How do you right? do that, which is sort did of I, what acronym yeah, is trying did I, to figure out. Did I get out, that right? right? Okay. So, w what this points to is that what a brand means to the user and its utility and the advice it provides that part of what the product is, is going to be extremely critical for the brand to stand out in that moment of that decision that's being made. And so it's no longer enough to have branding about imagery and just plain emotions, but also amazing relevance in terms of what advice is the brand providing to make the decision at that moment which means every brand has to have that question answered in that moment. I think, I would say that every boardroom, every marketer needs to answer that question very clearly. Was, yeah, quickly, I was just gonna say, I, I don't know if you have equity without relevance. I think you first need to start with, is your product, your service, whatever it is you're trying to promote, is it relevant to customers? And then to me, equity is built over time by delivering, continuously delivering exceptional experiences through the customer. Right, which maintains and it's this beautiful cycle of relevancy and equity together. It's the way I would look at it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, or I was going to say too. Like the like you need to take relevance one step further and, and get into utility. And I think you know, we, and, you know, the brands that were thrown up earlier around, you know, Uber and Amazon and Netflix. Like HBO makes great content, but Netflix is such an easier platform to use in so many different ways, which is why they've been able to grow their brand. And I think so. That utility piece is important. So last question, and then the panel will hang for a little bit afterwards, so. How about Shane, do you wanna take it, and then? So the common theme tonight has been about commoditization, functionally. Pizza, imagery, time. Um, you did an emotion which is not quant If you take that one step further, if you look at Google, if you look at Facebook, if you look at Twitter, if you look at LinkedIn, the, the ad formats are all commoditized as well. How do you steal the moments? How do you differentiate when everything has become so uniform? Don't make advertising. Do something different. <laughs> and with that, I think that's a great close. <laughs> I do think that's a great close. So look, another what I think is a really incredible uh, panel. This is all about elevating conversations. It's about debate. It's about you know kind of picking a lane and then it, there's no right or wrong. It's just about let, let's just debate it because I think there's an incredibly interesting view. I love Logo Joy. I think you guys are doing some incredible things. I also believe that there is a there is absolutely no replacement for humanity in really big critical ideas, measuring them, managing them. 
and helping to augment them with lots of technology. So I want to thank the panel very much for an excellent <laughs> night. I also want to thank all of you.